Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Uh, you're welcome. This is Fusion Mobile e-learning platform, a solution center. Uh, it's a unique clinic. We offer solutions to academic problems. And we don't only prefer solutions, we walk you through it. So I remember I own myself. I am Oshuto Gun Olajide, aka Smoking Brain. And I happen to be your biology tutor for today. Uh, so today we would be looking at excretion. And uh, still on excretion, we'll be looking at the following outlines. Uh, what is excretion? The importance of excretion. We'll be looking at the kidney extensively. Uh, we'll be looking at excretory organs and their waste product. And lastly, we'll be looking at excretion implant. It promises uh, to be explicit and exclusive. Uh, so stay concentrated. Uh, get your pen. Get your notebook. Uh, and you mean. So now let's go. Excretion. Now the first question is this: What is excretion? Now it is. A notable fact today that excretion happens to be one of the core characteristics of living organisms. Every living organism carry out excretion. Now, excretion is the removal of toxic metabolic waste products from the body. Uh, the word toxic means harmful. Now, this waste product, if they stay in the body for long, they become harmful to the body. So there is a need, therefore, for this waste product to be excreted, to be taken out of the body. Now, to a layman, excretion is simply the passing out of waste. Well, to biology students, basically, excretion is the removal of toxic metabolic waste product from the body. Now, this waste product, they are byproducts. They are not just ordinary products, they are byproducts. They are involved in digestive reactions and the end result, which we call the end product, is what is what released out of the body. Now, there is a need for me uh, to settle a long-term dispute, and which is what? Excretion, ejection, and secretion. Now, most biology students find it very hard to distinguish between excretion, ejection, and secretion. And most of them tend to uh, jumble about. They think excretion is ejection. Uh, but permit me today to correct that misinterpretation. Excretion is basically the removal of toxic metabolic waste products, which are byproducts from the body. Ejection is simply the removal of waste products from the body. Now, these waste products are not byproducts. Now, a very good example of a waste product in the body that are not byproducts is your feces. Now, whenever we talk about excretion, we talk about removing substances such as uh, CO2 from the body. Aside from CO2, we talk about uh, urea. Uh, aside from urea, we talk about sweat. And we talk about every other thing pertaining to what? Byproducts. Now, if I happen to take uh, five plates of beans, for example, now part of those beans will uh, undergo core digestion. Why some parts will not undergo digestion? Those parts that fail to undergo digestion will go straight to the large intestine. And from there, they will get passed out from the body through the hands. Now, the ones that go basically for digestion, at the end of the day, they will release energy. At the expense of energy, they give out other waste products from the body, uh, such as urine, uh, CO2, sweat, as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, so lastly, we go to the word secretion. Now, what is secretion? Uh, take note, secretion is not excretion, and uh, neither is secretion ejection. As I said earlier, excretion is the removal of waste products from the body. These waste products are byproducts. Ejection is the removal of waste products from the body. These waste products are not byproducts. And uh, why lastly, secretion? Secretion is basically the release of both hormones and enzymes. Now, whenever you hear the word secretion, what should readily come to your mind is what hormones and what enzymes. Now, hormones and enzymes are released uh, to catalyze reaction uh, that has to do with digestion, that has to do with reproduction, uh, that has to do with respiration and all that. Uh, a time will come when we will deal with that extensively. Uh, so now that we've established the fact that excretion is not ejection, and now that is ejection secretion, I would like to really well, take it again. I would like to re-summarize it uh, before we go to the next outline. Now, excretion is basically the removal of toxic waste product from the body. Now, when there is something is toxic, it basically means that it is harmful. Now, it has to be removed from the body. Now, these toxic harmful substances are gotten as byproducts. That is, they are the end product of a digestive reaction. They are involved in digestion. Now, when they get broken down, this is what is produced and they have to be released from the body. 
Now, ejection are, are waste products from the body that are not byproducts. They are not involved in digestion. And they are just are part of the food substances that we take into the body. And they go straight to the light intestine and straight to the animals are out of the body. Now, secretion has to do with what? The release of hormones, release of enzymes to catalyze reaction in the body. Now, the second outline is what? Uh, importance of excretion. Let's quickly look at that. Importance of excretion. The word importance talks about benefits. Uh, it talks about advantages. Now, what do we get from excretion? Why is excretion necessary for all living organisms? Now, one point is this one essential point is this. it helps to remove harmful substances from the body. Now, if this harmful substances stays very long in the body, and they cause harm to the body, they cause other part of the body not to function very well. Now, aside from removing toxic substances in the body, they have to maintain salt and water balance in the body. Now, again, I'll take it, they have to remove harmful substances for the body they have to maintain water balance in the body and lastly they have to maintain what salt balance in the body now let's quickly move to uh the third outline which is what the kidney the kidney now before we get to the kidney i would love to introduce uh some uh new facts to you although they are not that new but i, I love calling them new facts so i would love to uh introduce them to you Okay, I will see it. Now, these are the new files that I'm talking about. Now, basically, we're going to be looking at organisms and their respiratory organisms. We're going to be looking at those lower organisms and what they use as what a means of excretion. Now, the first on my list is what protozoa. Now, protozoa are unicellular organisms. Are well, we, a very good example of uh, protozoa is your amoeba, uh, your chlamydomonas, your vulvas, your pandorina, and your eudorina. Uh, so, basically, number one, we have the word the protozoa. Now, what do the protozoa use? Uh, what does the protozoa use uh, as their excretory organelle? We have what we call the word the contractor vacuus. Now the protozoans basically are uh, they use what we call what the contractile vacuus. And now if I move forward, I would love to uh, define and establish uh, the meaning of organelles. Now what are organelles? Organelles are what structures are. Uh, the word organelle is gotten from the root word organ. Organ. Now just like sense organ, sense structure. Now the word organ talks about what special structure that are used for specific purposes. Special structures that are used for what specific purposes. For example, now you don't make use of your mouth when smelling. I you mean, you make use of your nose. Whenever you want to like eavesdrop or you want to gossip, you don't make use of your eyes. You make use of your ear. And that's the basic fact about it. So, all that is about what special structures that carry out what specific function. So, now the special structure that carry out the function of excretion, that's why we call them excretory organic. Special organs that carry out the function of excretion in protozoa such as amoeba. Is what we call what contractile vacuums. Never forget. Now, aside from our protozoa, what other organisms? What we call the one? We call them the platyaminthes. The platyaminthes are generally known as flat worm. Now, the flat worm, they make it of a special organ for excretion, and that special organ is called what flame cells. And uh, never forget, it's called what? Flame cell. So let's move on. Now, aside from platyaminthes, what we call the anelida. Anelida. Now, a very good example of the anelida is what we call the word, the earth worm. Now, the earth worm, the main is of what we call the nephridia. The nephridia. Now, nephridia here is plural. Dia. Plural. Now, the singular of the word, nephri, nephridium. Nephridium like stadium, stadia, singular plural. So basically, they make it about what we call what the nephridia. Now, aside from it, what the crustaceans? The crustaceans. A very good example of the crustaceans, they are what crab. The crustaceans, a very good example is what we call the word the crab. Don't forget. Now, let's quickly take it from the beginning uh, before we uh, move forward again. Now, a very good example of the protozoa family is the amoeba. They make it about what we call the contractile vacuoles. A very good example of the platyaminthes is the flat one. They make it about what we call flame cell. 
If you have an example of the Anelida, the earthworm, they make it about what we call Nephrida. If you have an example of the crustacean scrap, they make it about what we call the, what? the green gland. They make it about what we call what? the green gland. Specialized structure for excretion. Specialized structure for excretion. Now, what have the group called what? Pisces. Pisces are fishes. Never forget. Pisces are fishes. They make it about what we call the what? The kidney. Are you surprised? Yeah. Now, most times we tend to think uh, it, uh, it is this, the gills. Now, the gills are also used for excretion. But the major function, or, or, okay, let me rephrase my statement. The major structure for excretion is the kidney. The gills could also perform the function of excretion, but that is not their major function. Their major function is respiration. But most times they tend to perform the function of excretion. But the major structure for excretion is the kidney. So aside from the kidney, uh, we have the reptiles. Uh, and every example of uh, the group of reptiles uh, is the lizard. Aside from reptiles, we have the amphibians. Amphibians. Now these two, they also make it what we call the word the kidney. The kidney. So aside from this, we have the avis. They are called birds. These make it what we call the kidney and the lungs. The kidney and the lungs. The kidney and the lungs. A is bad. So I tell you, you have the mammals. I'm a mammal. we a mammal. So mammals make use of uh, what we call the kidney, the lungs, the skin, the kidney, uh, the lung, the skin. Uh, what else? Okay, the kidney, the lung, the skin, and every other organel. Uh, that you can actually think of. And lastly, we have the plants. Plants. Now, plants have two special excretory organelles. Two special excretory organelles. One of them is called the what? The lenticels. It's called the lenticels. Why the other one is called the what? The stomata. Again, one is called the lenticel. Why the other one is called the what? The stomata. Okay. So, right on the board, here we have uh, excretory organ in man and their waste products. Now, what this table is uh, simply talking about is that uh, for skin, what do they exude? What is the waste product that the skin tends to give out? Uh, what is the waste product that we get from the liver? What is the waste product of the lungs? And what is the waste product uh, of the kidney? It's suffice to say that for every man out there, uh, we have uh, four excretory organelles. We've got the skin, we've got the liver, we have the lungs, and we have the kidney. Now the skin secretes sweat. Again, the skin secretes sweat. Uh, we tend to bring out sweat from our skin. And sweat now is a waste product. Skin is an excretory organelle. Uh, the liver secretes what we call bisalt, uh, water and urea. Bisalt, water and urea. Now this bisalt is initially stored in the gallbladder. The bisalt is initially stored in the gallbladder. Now, basically, when uh, hemoglobin is broken down in the body, it forms what we call bilirubin. Bilirubin. Now, bilirubin is what is responsible uh, for the color of our feces, or simply say uh, your poop. -poo. Yeah. So, bilirubin is responsible for the color. Uh, is your poop -poo brown? Uh, is it black? Uh, is it yellow? Uh, this enzyme here is responsible for that color, bilirubin. Now, bilirubin is also stored in the gallbladder. It's a form of bile. It is stored in the gallbladder. It's a, a kind of waste product. So it has to be taken out from the body. Now, aside from bile, so it's also stored, it also excretes what we call water and urea. Now, the lungs. The lungs is generally known as a, res a, respiratory, a respiratory organ. It excretes what we call CO2 and water. It gives out CO2 to the atmosphere, while in turn it takes in what we call what? oxygen. The kidney. The kidney is an excretory organ that brings out what we call urine. Urine. Now we've talked about the formation of urine. Uh, urine is formed uh, using three basic processes. Uh, one is what we call ultrafiltration. The second is what we call selective reabsorption. Uh, while the last one is what we call the hormonal secretion. Uh, we made mention of the fact that an hormone has to be present uh, before uh, ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption will take place. The name of that hormone is what we call ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Again, ADH, antidiuretic hormone. 
So can we just take a look at our words on the board again? A secretory organ in man, what the skin, the liver, the lungs, and the kidney. Uh, the skin secretes sweat, the liver secretes bile salt, the liver secretes urea and water as well. The lungs secrete carbon dioxide and water. What the kidney secretes what we call was urine. Now what is responsible for the color of our feces is what we call bilirubin. When bilirubin is oxidized, it is called bilivadine. But basically you need to take note of this word bilirubin. It is responsible for the color of your feces. Now the bile is initially stored in the gallbladder. And the liver is known as a very important organ in the body. It, the size is 1.5 kilogram. It is very, very important. It does the work of detoxification, uh, deamination, and every other important uh, function in the body. Again, the skin secretes sweat, the liver by salt, water, and urea, lung CO2 and water, the kidney secretes what we call, the kidney excretes uh, what we call urine. So with this now, we now move to the next outline, uh, which is what we call excretion in plants. Excretion in plants. Now we've looked at excretion in humans. Uh, basically man, and man could also go for woman, as case may be. Now we'll be looking at excretion in plants. Uh, now we have established from the onset of this class that plant has got two basic excretory organelles. Uh, one is what we call the lenticel, while the other is what we call the stomata. The lenticel and the stomata. These are the excretory organelles in plants. Now, just like when we have lungs, liver, uh, skin, and kidney, they have their own lenticel and stomata. Now, the stomata opens during the day and it closes at night. The lenticels is usually seen at the back of trees. The stomata is found on leaves. It could be at the top of a leaf or underneath the leaf. It opens during the day and it closes at night. Now there is a particular cell that is responsible for the opening and the closing of stomata. Now the stomata is opened. When it is like this, it is closed. When it is like this, it is open. So basically, what is responsible for the opening and closing of the stomata is this structure here. And it is called the guard cell. So the guard cell is responsible for the opening and closing of stomata. Why this opening here is called stoma? Stoma for singular, stomata for plural. Again, I said the lenticels is found at the back of trees and the stomata is found on leaves. Now what is the major function of the lenticel and the stomata? They are responsible for gaseous exchange. Why lungs secrete? Why lungs excrete CO2, which is carbon dioxide? And the stomata gives out oxygen in plants. It is the oxygen that is given out by plant that is now taken in by man. Now it is the CO2 that is given out by man that is taken in by plants. So it is a, a kind of uh, sustaining, a kind of sustainability in the environment. Uh, so basically, plants excrete what we call oxygen. Uh, humans make use of the oxygen. A human will excrete what we call CO2, while plants will make use of uh, the CO2. The stomata is found on leaves, the lead cell is found at the back of trees, uh, both are responsible for gaseous essay. Now, what are the excretory products in plants? One, what we call the anthocyanin. What the anthocyanin? We have lattes or gum. Anthocyanin, lattes or gum. And uh, what we call uh, the CO2, among others. So can we just go again? The lenticel and the stomata are the excretory organs uh, in plants. The lenticel is found at the back of trees. The stomata is found on leaves. Uh, both are responsible uh, for the passage of CO2. CO2 is excreted by plants. The CO2 excreted by plants is made use of uh, by humans. A uh, human excretes what we call what? Uh, uh, sorry, CO oxygen is excreted by plants. The oxygen that is excreted by plants is made use of by human. Human excretes CO2. So the CO2 that is excreted by human is made use of by plant. Stomata is found on leaves again. Lead cell is found at the back of trees. The cell that is responsible for the opening and the closing of stomata is called the guard cell. The stomata opens during the day and it closes at night. The following are the excretory products of plant. We have anthocyanin, we have lattes, we have gum, we have CO2, we have tannins, among others. Uh, so now we are basically going to be looking at uh, the kidney. We're going to be looking at what the kidney. Now we're going to be looking at the extensive structure of the kidney. Uh, we're going to be looking at the functional unit of the kidney. We're going to be looking at uh, the process of formation of urine at large. Uh, so uh, stay with me, don't go. Okay. 
Now, right on the board is the structure of the kidney. Uh, it is a wonderful structure. Uh, this is the structure of your kidney and uh, my own kidney. Now, as you can see, the various parts of the kidney are, are well spelled out on the board. The renal artery is the structure uh, that carries blood to the kidney. For every artery, there must be a corresponding vein. Now, the vein carries blood away from the kidney. The outer cortex is present in the kidney and very close to the outer cortex is what we call the inner medulla and the structure here is what we call the apex of pyramid. Now the ureter is the connection between the kidney and the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is where the urine is stored uh, temporarily uh, before it now moves to the ureter and from there it is now passed out through the penis uh, for man so to speak. Uh, so the functional unit of a kidney is called the nephron. It is also known as a urinary tubule. It is also known as a urinary what? tubules. Uh, there are over one million. There are over one million urinary tubules ah, in the kidney. There are over one million urinary tubules in the kidney. The urinary tubule is also called nephron, or you could say the nephron is also called the the urinary ah, tubules. And now, basically, in the kidney. Uh, ultrafiltration occur. Ultrafiltration occur in the kidney. And when in the kidney does ultrafiltration occur, it occurs in the Bowman's capsule. Uh, but before we go further, we love uh, us to look at the formation of urine in the kidney. Uh, there are three basic processes that are involved in the formation of urine. Uh, one is what we call ultrafiltration. One is called ultrafiltration. Number two is called selective reabsorption. Ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption. Uh, while the last is called hormonal secretion. Ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption. While the last is called what? Hormonal secretion. The ultrafiltration occurs in the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule ah, is a part of the kidney where ultrafiltration occurs. Ultrafiltration occurs in the Bowman's capsule. Ah, the Bowman's capsule contains what we call a mass of blood capillaries. It contains what we call a mass of blood capillaries. Now, this mass of blood capillaries is called the glomerulus. It's called the, what, the glomerulus. This mass of blood capillary functions by what? Ah, uh, filtering blood particles. Uh, the blood brings glucose, hormones, water, and every other necessary, uh, necessary thing to the kidney. Now, when it gets to the kidney, there is a need for separation of these particles uh, because the body will need some of these particles. Now, there is a need for separation, as I said earlier. So, what carries out the function of separation is the glomerulus. It separates the water from every part that is needed. Are you with me? So the water that is being separated from the solid particle, like the glucose, the hormone, and the urea, so to speak, uh, that the water that is being separated from them is now retained in the Bowman's capsule. Now, what remains in the Bowman's capsule is called the glomerular filtrate. It's called the glomerular filtrate. That is what remains after ultrafiltration. It's called the, the glomerular filtrate. Now, what is selective reabsorption? Selective reabsorption basically is a process of what reabsorbing useful materials that the blood carries to the kidney. The useful materials that are present in the kidney, it will now be reabsorbed back into the body. Now, where does selective reabsorption take place? It takes place in the proxima covulated tube. And that's where it takes place in the proxima covulated tube. Now, there is a need for a particular hormone uh, that will be responsible for maintaining all this reaction in the kidney. Now, that hormone is called ADH. And that's what brings us to what we call hormonal secretion. ADH. ADH is anti-diuretic what? Hormone. That's ADH. Anti-diuretic hormone. It is very, very important and what? Essential. It is responsible for what? Selective reabsorption and ultrafiltration, that is the hormone that is in charge of it. Are you with me? So the processes that are involved in the formation of urine are ultrafiltration, after ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption, after selective reabsorption, hormonal secretion. Then at the end of this, 
the urine is formed and it responds it, and it is uh, and it is ready to be passed out from the body. Now I hope you enjoy this wonderful session with us. Uh, if you've got any constraints, try as much as possible to go through the video again. It's nice having you here. It's nice uh, uh, learning with you. It's nice enjoying and having this adventurous uh, uh, academic spirit with you. Thank you very much.